people come. People go. Your life has been out of control. You're confused. But don't worry. FCBC family, graduates, and friends. We are stars in ordinary time, surrounded by extraordinary things in the universe. And also like planets and galaxies close to the sun, we have gone through the fire. And yet fire purifies, clarifies, signifies, and declares that we, you and me, moving through the nebula of contagion have been reborn. As we shine amid space junk and intergalactic conspiracy theories, we remember the God of our ancestors and our present time gave birth to our galactic stardom from the womb to beyond the tomb. Let us shine brilliantly like a star created by God Get out your imaginary telescope and behold, a star is born. Jesus, our shining star, came to earth and taught, preached, healed, loved, struggled, and sacrificed himself for us so that we would have a life abundant and yet be reimagined in the universe. Jesus reminded us on his galactic return to the God of the heavens that greater things we would do. So always remember, you're a shining star, no matter who you are, shining bright you see, so you can truly be. Go on and be a star reimagined. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for always making us feel like a special star in the universe. We as human beings adore the fact that you have created us with unique characteristics that make us who we truly be. As we celebrate our graduates, we are grateful that somewhere in the midst of life's challenges and struggles, you have allowed all of us across the stage of fear, doubt, and uncertainty, and receive a new hope. We thank you for the greatest teacher of all, Jesus the Christ, who has allowed all of us to remove our imaginary mortar board, throw it up in the air, and say, thank you, Lord, for making a way out of no way. Class is dismissed, and a new journey begins. And we are so thankful and grateful to our God. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Now, we won't have to wait till Monday. Come on, y'all. Anyway, we are grateful to be together with one another on this beautiful day that the Lord has made so our hearts can't help but to rejoice and be glad. It is in this time now that with joy, we can approach the throne of grace and bring to God all of our stuff, all of the things that we want to praise God for, all the things that we want to petition God for, all the things that are just floating in our minds that we have questions about. We can bring all those things to our God who clarifies stuff for us, who helps us to be creative in spaces, who helps us to learn to collaborate with one another to build something greater. So as you have already started to do, go ahead and type your prayer request into the chat. Let's see what we got here. Let's take a little moment just to recognize we are still keeping watch over and praying for Sister Mary Morton. And of course, for Reverend Logan, as they walk through this moment together, we are praying for Kaya Smith, 
Tanisha White, Diamond White, Dana, Marlon, uh, Deka, Carlene, Brandon Harris, Darian Harris, Camille Threadgill, Brenda, oh, Brenda Henry, Taisha Tanner, Linda Pemberton, Bernice Pemberton, the whole Crenshaw family. We are praying for Sister Joanne's neighbor, Jay Hartman, whose brother was killed Friday night in a car accident. Um, he suffered a heart attack while he was driving. We are praying, praying for that family. We are praying for Barkley Jones. We are praying for Jen the Jenkins and Raglan families. We're praising God for stay connected, stay on point. Just keep growing and just perfecting that pod. We just want to thank God for that. We want to pray for, continue to pray for Sister Deborah Jones and Shante Jones and Brother Richard, the whole household. We're praying for my mother and sister that are traveling this way. Um, and we are always keeping in prayer the Lanier family, um, who's a cousin of Sister Joanne and uh, the family of Mary Lee Boyd, who is the aunt of Arvesta Bailey and Juanita Boney and, and family. We are praying for um, Sister Paulette Harrison as she funeralized her dad, Percy Lee Jones. We're praying for our sick. Estelle Atkins. We always keep in Sister Zoe Booker in our prayers, who is the granddaughter of Sister Joe Booker. We keep in Theodore Booth Sr. and Thomas Camper, Monica Cherry, Melvin Davis, Sister Julie Harris. God is doing some miraculous things. Again, Sister Brenda, Sister Claudia, always praising God for Sister Connie's healing praying for Sister Bertha Jones and Dr. Patricia Turner Olds, Ethel Parker, George Puckett, Jacqueline Sowell, Reverends Hattie and Robert Wiggins, Brother Haywood Wynn. We are also praying for our shut-in, Willie Bryant, Gerard Camper, Graylin Crawley, Clifton Tucker, Faye Washington, Itemus Wilson. Uh, we're praying for the leaders of the Richmond, Richmond area. Um, we're praying in terms of, oh, somebody's starting their first uh, nursing externship tomorrow, Letitia Jones. Amen, Ashley. We are excited about the new things that God is doing, so let us go to the throne, even as we are praying for all of our 2021 graduates. Dear God, we are grateful for this moment that you filled our hearts with joy because we recognize that before we were born, you breathed into us the breath of eternity that helps us to get a sense of where we are here, but always striving to be with you there, Lord God. We are grateful that you have given us this spirit of joy that becomes our strength, that makes us wake up in the morning and put on the whole armor so that we can walk into any situation, Lord God, and know that you have our backs, Lord. We are come just praising you and thanking you because you have given each of us favor. It is a testament that we come to this space virtually every week, Lord God. Some people don't have access, Lord God. Some people don't have the mental capacity, Lord God, but you've given us favor to be in this moment so that we can be blessings to those that can't get to this moment. We are grateful for this place called Faith Community Baptist Church. We're glad for all the members that you keep bringing. We're glad for the leadership that leads with integrity and love, Lord God. We are grateful that you put us in this space in the midst of communities where other people see a drought or 
or blithe, Lord God, but we see as blessing, Lord God. We see as powerful and just potential, just ready to erupt. So thank you for positioning us in this place to be the hands and the feet and the imagination that gives spark to your miracles, Lord God. We come because we can, Lord God, to give you thanks for those that have matriculated through their programs and have graduated. There have been some good days and they've been some bad days, but ultimately, Lord God, you brought this day. They've stayed the course, Lord God. They've run the race. And so we just thank you for the spirit of endurance that helped them to do a great thing that is going to lead to greater things, Lord God. So as we celebrate this moment, we're also asking that you would open up the windows of heaven, Lord God, and just help your people to see what you've prepared them for so that they can move into greater possibilities, Lord. We are praying for the families that have lost their loved ones, and we're just leaning on you because you said that you would give us some beauty for our ashes and that in the time when we would be mourning, you would lift us up into dance, Lord God. So we ask that this beautiful spirit that you give us during times of mourning would rest and hold and provide comfort, Lord God. And for those of us that are wrestling with the limitations of our bodies, Lord. We ask that you continue to enrich our facilities, Lord God. We ask that you enrich our faculties, Lord God. We ask that the miraculousness in which you designed this body would come to life so that even though the doctors are doing what they can do, to heal, Lord God, we are asking that by the power that is in each cell that it awakens and it begins to heal so that we can be whole, Lord God. We come thanking you for this moment in history that sometimes looks like a mess, Lord God, but we know that you're in the background and you're in the foreground creating something beautiful out of chaos, Lord. We are just grateful as your people, Lord, that you are blessing marriages, Lord, and you are healing bodies, Lord, and you are speaking to and through our children, Lord, and you are anointing some of us into ministry that never thought we would be called, Lord God. You are giving new dreams to those of us that thought we were too old to dream, and you are giving visions and helping us to see how to make dreams come true for those of us who are young adults, Lord God. We are grateful that you have given us a great cloud of witnesses that walk with us, Lord, that are whispering into our ear wisdom. We are grateful for our ancestors that are flowing through us and helping us to address issues in our lives that are too complex for us as we stand in this space facing them. But because they are resting with the angels, their perspective, Lord God, is becoming powerful in our lives. So we just come this morning to thank you and to praise you for being the God that you said you would be, Lord God. You said that you don't have to lie because you're not a man. You said that you are watching over every word that you've given to us and making sure that it would come to be. You said you loved us so much that you would wrap who you were into flesh and you would come and dwell in the midst of us. And so we are thanking you for Jesus Christ our savior and our elder brother who walks through situations before we have to, who walks through the minefields before we have to so that we can walk through, Lord God, on dry land and away from things that could seek to destroy us. So we are just 
grateful, Lord God, even during this season of Pentecost, we are rejoicing that your spirit courses through our hearts and minds, just like your blood courses through our veins, giving us new life and new hope, lifting us out of spaces that seem as though there is no light and bringing us into spaces that are ready for us to thrive and to flourish, Lord God. We are grateful that you put us into these bodies, Lord God. We are grateful that you put us into these homes, Lord God. We are grateful that you've set our feet on higher ground, Lord God, so that we can lead others into spaces that help them to see you more, Lord. We are grateful as a people, Lord. We are grateful for your anointing. We are grateful for your presence, Lord. So as we close this prayer down, Lord God, open our hearts up in this moment to receive more of you so that we can give more to those that you've called us to. Thank you, Lord, for being present in our lives. Thank you for being powerful in our midst. Thank you for knitting us together when we thought we were broken apart. Thank you for healing. Thank you for everlasting and eternal hope, Lord God. And we especially thank you for your love that continues to lift us. We offer ourselves, we offer our petitions, we offer this praise in Jesus Christ most precious and powerful name who's sitting right next to you and interceding on our behalf. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray and give thanks. Amen and amen. Amen. Woo. This is the day that the Lord has made. That means God took some time and dreamt it up and put the right colors together. This is like uh, something I say to my husband. Some people are trying to create the day with three crayons, but God has at least 164 in a box and just whipping out something creative for us to walk into. And so we are grateful for this day that God has called us into to be God's co-creators and collaborators. All right, enough of all of that. Who today we are blessed because there is a preacher in the house. Amen. Um, today we are blessed because this preacher is going to bring a powerful word. Isn't that right, Minister Kane? Our preacher this morning is Minister Samantha Kane. She is the Associate Minister at the Communities Christian Church in Warsaw, Virginia. She has a Bachelor of Science degree in Biology from Christian Newport, and she earned a Master of Divinity degree from our beloved School of Theology at Virginia Union University. Hopefully we didn't mess her up too much as faculty. Who this daughter of a preacher that God has blessed with the heart and mind of a prophet is gifted to be analytical and innovative and anointed. I saw all of that in her bio. Um, and based on a vision that God has given her and her own heart's desire to encourage marginalized individuals to navigate and value their own life stories. Minister Kane founded um, My Diamond Story, which is a platform created to encourage individuals to translate the difficult twists and turns in life into treasured testimony. <laughs> Um, in more public and organizational spaces um, and fulfilling her call to bridge the gap between faith and justice, Minister Kane serves as president of the Richmond County chapter of the NAACP. 
She is also lead organizer in a movement called uh, Movement Northern Neck, in which she convenes a coalition of local protest movements in order to collaborate for greater power, influence, and impact. Minister Kane has also served as Director of Operations for Violence Intervention and Prevention, VIP. God has blessed her to leverage that work into research entitled, Who Will Survive in America? The Impact of Social Injustice, Police Brutality, and Systemic Racism on Underserved Communities. Because of her research, she has been blessed to travel across the nation. And recently, as she put the act in activism, she found herself in some good trouble as she and colleagues were arrested and charged for advocating justice for Breonna Taylor. An exemplary role model and advocate for liberation and social justice, Minister Samantha works tirelessly at refining processes, policies, and programs that support the uplifting of oppressed and marginalized communities. But ultimately, Samantha is a proud Black woman who strives to intentionally give God glory for all that she is and all that she's done because when people counted her out, God counted her in. After the musical selection, the next voice you will hear is that of Minister Samantha LaJoy Kane. Let us give God a praise clap in advance for the miracle and power of the word that Minister Kane will offer. In Jesus' name, preach, Black woman. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning to God be the glory. I wonder if that's anybody's testimony this morning that Jesus Christ is the best decision that I've ever made. He's the best relationship that I ever had. I'm so thankful this morning that falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever done. That wasn't always the decision that I chose to make. But when I decided to come in right relationship with my Lord Savior Jesus Christ, I can assure you that it's been the best decision I've ever made. And this morning, I just want to tell God, thank you for allowing us to be in relationship with you because we serve a mighty good God. We serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I don't know if you know it or not, but we serve the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the best decision that I've ever made. And I'm so grateful this morning. I'm so so grateful that we serve a mighty good God. We serve a mighty good God. Amen. Amen. I first of all want to give honor to the God that we do serve, the King of Kings, and tell the Lord, thank you for allowing me to share in this sacred space with you all this morning. I want to thank Pastor Allison for her guidance and her direction and her leadership on this morning and also Pastor C. Era as her family has has brought in a new bundle of joy. Brother Grayson and his father who are also on the live on this morning. Uh, Faith Community Baptist Church, you are an amazing body of people. So I do thank you all for allowing me to enter this space this morning to the founding visionary of this great branch of Zion, the Reverend Dr. Patricia Goulchamp. We honor her this morning and we appreciate and love her and shower her this morning. So I thank you all for this invitation. Let us go to God in prayer. God, we thank you for entering into this moment with us. God, we thank you that you have been in our prayers and you have been in our praise and our worship. At this time, God, we are believing and we're pressing into you to even be present in this time of sermon, God. 
of preaching, Lord God. God, we pray that you would send your power as it's already dwelt in this place. Lord God, I pray that you would give us nourishment for the journey that lies ahead of us, but God, also nourishment for right now. Lord God, I pray that this word will touch and fall on open hearts, open minds, and open ears. So God, that when we leave from this moment, Lord, we will be changed, we will be transformed, and we will be the better because we would have an encounter with you. Lord God, I pray this morning that you would use your servant, remove every distraction out of the way, God. Allow us to focus solely on you. Lord God, have your way in the midst of this moment. God, and we won't take credit for anything that happens, but we'll be able to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. God, this morning, we simply say that we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. If you all would turn in the word of God with me this morning, we'll be coming from Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, I'll be reading from the NET version, and you have verse one on your screen, but I'm going to take the time to read verses one and two. Hebrews chapter 12, verses one and two. The word of God reads, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, we must get rid of every weight and the sin that clings so closely and run the race with endurance, the race set out for us. Keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set out for him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. If you all would bear with me for a moment, I want to preach from the subject title, Pat Light, Pat Light. I don't know if you're in home by yourself this morning or if you have someone around you, but go ahead and help me preach this morning and tell your neighbor, Pat Light, Pat Light. Brothers and sisters, this week I learned a new word that I like to share with you all. The word that I learned this week comes from an African people, the people of Akon in Ghana, Africa. That word that I learned that I'm sharing with you all is Sankofa. This word is depicted as a symbol where there is a bird standing with its feet turned forward, its head turned backwards while taking an egg from its back with its beak. This symbol and this word together mean go back to the past and bring forward that which is useful for the future. If you didn't catch it, let me give it to you again. The word Sankofa means to go back to the past and bring forth that which is useful for the future. You see, we as African-American people, we have been stripped away and stripped from so much of our past, our history, and our stories of our ancestors that during these current times, we are searching for, appreciating, respecting, learning, and relearning the culture and history of our Native people. We are going back, journeying back to our past in order to collect the facts of our history that are told by Black people because for so long our stories have been whitewashed and even left untold. As we are present between two very important moments of Black history, which are truly new to being told and heard across the states, on June the 1st of this year, we went back to get our 100-year-old history to remember the over 300 people that were murdered in the Tulsa race riots as the white mob of people burned down 35 city blocks of the Greenwood District in Tulsa, Oklahoma, better known as Black Wall Street. On the other side of June, on June the 19th, Black people, we will celebrate being freeish as we remember the last of the slaves being freed in Texas in 1865, two years after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation by the then President Abraham Lincoln that was supposed to free all the slaves. 
Brothers and sisters, as I rejoice over our people going back to obtain the stories, as we are becoming more rooted in claiming our identity, our history, and our Black history. But I, if I can be honest this morning, although I found myself celebrating a job well done, I also found myself in a seat of mourning. As I continue to meditate on this word, Sankofa, and I begin to celebrate us as a people going back to get our history and using it to launch us into our future, I began to dig a little deeper and I began to think of all the things that we as people, both individually and collectively, have gone back to get that we really didn't even need. I began to think of all the things that we take hold of in our past that we struggle to release as we travel on our journey into the future. We constantly evolve in patterns which cause us to live into generational curses as well as personal pitfalls. We pick up and hold on to past habits, thought processes, thought processes, behaviors, customs, traditions, attitudes, and ideas that come in the form of different addictions, exclusivity, toxic relationships, bad health reports, depression, endless cycles of going back and forth, unhealthy and unnecessary life-threatening conditions. We continuously miss the meaning of the word Sankofa as it states to pick up that which is useful. You see, this morning, I believe that the Lord has come to do some healing. The Lord has come to free to some of us, to speak to some of us who have been weighed down and bottled up. Someone who has been trying to pick up too much. Someone who has been under pressure trying to carry too much. Someone who can't see the future because they're too busy looking down, trying to pick up that which they've dropped that they don't even have the capacity to hold. My brothers and my sisters, I come to speak as an agent of the most high God to inform you that all you're trying to carry may not be useful and necessary for the journey that God is taking you on and the purpose that God is carrying you to. It took me a minute to get here this morning, but I believe that the instruction is simple. Pack light. There is no need to pack all of that extra stuff. Just bring on what is necessary. You don't have to carry all of that heavy stuff that's been weighing you down. Let it go. Just carry what you really need. Stop packing what you think you need once you get to your destination, because once you get to your destination, you'll find that you have everything that you need. Only grasp on to what you can hold, because there may not be a lot of space or a lot of time for you to get where you're trying to go. There may be some rough moments on this journey, so don't pack anything which may slow you down. Just take what is essential. We are in a space and in a season where God is pouring into us what we need in order to make it through this journey of life. This is graduation Sunday, so young people hear us clearly this morning. The Lord is preparing you for what is to come. I don't know about you all, but life is already challenging enough when we have to pack our own stuff. But when we add on to all that comes with being in the middle of a global pandemic, when we add on to still being in the middle of social injustice and social unrest, when we add on all that comes with economic disparities based upon our zip codes, when we have to add on our family drama, our friend pettiness, our ministry obstacles, our organization disagreements, and our co-worker headaches, life can seem to get the best of us. We are in a season where we recognize that no two of our journeys look exactly the same, but we can encourage one another with many of the same tactics and preparatory practices. One of my favorite sayings is delay is not denial. But you see, if we are honest today, many of us could have reached our destinations, our blessings, our promise, and our purposes a long time ago. But we've allowed our love to cling on to unnecessary stuff to slow us down. Some of us have become spiritual hoarders and we need to come and declutter what we're trying to carry because it's blocking us from making space for the place and the space that God wants to move in. 
Last year, I did a lot of traveling. I was in and out of airports running from state to state. In my time of travel, I learned a very important lesson, Miss Lisa. I learned that although my suitcase may be big, it doesn't mean I have to fill it full of stuff. I found that when I would fill my suitcase full of stuff and I had to pick up my pace trying to make it to my gate to catch my flight, it would sometimes cause my suitcase to slip from slide to side behind me as I was trying to reach my destination. I'd have to slow my pace to accommodate my suitcase, to accommodate my stuff and hope that nothing would fall out that I would have to stop and pick up because that would delay me from getting to where I needed to go. I had to learn to tell myself when packing, Samantha, you don't really need all of that stuff. You won't even use half of it to when you get to where you're going. Just pack what you really need. Just pack what is necessary. Just pack what is useful. Just pack light. As we journey through these two short verses of this text, I believe it provides us with some instruction on how to pack light this morning. The first thing I believe that this text is calling for us to do is to release. If you read the text, it's very specific and it says that we must get rid of every weight and the sin that clings so tight closely. I love the wording of this particular part of the verse because it doesn't just say to get rid of sin. It says to get rid of every weight. I love this because we as Christians oftentimes get stuck in limbo trying to plead a case to determine if this is sin or if that is sin so that we can somehow try to justify still living in sin as people are still, as people are still needing their souls to be saved. But this morning, we have to find some, but this text makes it clear that for us to get rid of anything that separates and hinders us and keeps us away from God, if we are going to pack light, we have to release. Let go of those things that serve no purpose in your pursuit towards Christ. Things that hinder our journey and hold us back from being all that God who has created us to be. Many of us struggle to reach our full capacity in God because we are so clogged with disappointment, hurt, anger, jealousy, and struggles from our past that we don't have enough room for God to fully pour into us what we need for our future. We've got to release resentment and stop harboring bitterness. We must release the unnecessary in order to make room for the purposeful. We must release the unneeded in order to make room for God to move. The sins which are clearly outlined in the Bible for us in the word of God are not the only things that stifle our journey. What I've learned along my 28 years of living that there are things that look good. There are even some things that feel good that are not good for me because they take us out of line, out of the direction that God is trying to carry us to to clear up any gray area that you may be wrestling with when trying to identify sin. Let me help you out this morning. Even if you allow a good thing to linger for too long and it becomes, un it starts to unnecessarily start taking up space in your life and starts to take your attention away from God, then it's probably sin. But I'm so glad that we serve a God that doesn't take access to release something without trading or replacing it for something greater, something of value. When we release our heaviness, God calls us to replace it with something light. God calls us to replace our heaviness with faith and belief in the master. Examine the text with me. The first word in verse one says, therefore. The word therefore is used to make a transition connecting one cause to another. On the latter half of this transitional phrase, we read that we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. But what makes these witnesses so great? It's in the portion of scripture preceding this transition to chapter 12, verse 1. You see, in Hebrews chapter 11, we are introduced to some Old Testament characters who are said to be amongst this great cloud of witnesses. Individuals such as Abel, Enoch, Noah, Jacob, Sarah, Isaac, Joseph, Moses, and even a prostitute named Rahab. 
if you don't allow these, if you don't know all of these individuals and without preaching the entirety of chapter 11, I can tell you that all of these witnesses had one thing in common and that one thing is faith. You see, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. These individuals share ancestral testimonies that we need to go back and get. Testimonies which are useful, wisdom that will encourage us, stories that will inform us of how they made it over, testimonies that remind us if that we can just keep our faith in God, if we can continue to trust in God, if we can continue to lean and depend on God, then God will continue to be all that we need. God will continue to make ways out of no ways. God will continue to do the impossible. God will continue to open doors that no man can shut. God will continue to use those who have been cast aside and labeled as, as labeled as useless. If we just release control and let go of what keeps us stagnant and put faith in the master, our God, the father, our shoulders will feel a little lighter. We will be able to breathe a little easier. Our blood pressure may just decrease. If we release what we have been trying to carry around, just go ahead and release it this morning because it it's too heavy and you can't bear it alone. Put your faith in God who can carry it for you. And this morning I was reminded that the name of your church is Faith Community Baptist Church. And I just wonder on this morning, since the word faith is in your name, do I dwell amongst some living witnesses that can testify that we've been in here for 20 something odd years and we haven't been able to move on our own agenda, but we've just been leaning and depending and having faith in God that what was unbearable at times seemed to be lifted when we just put our faith and our hope and our trust in God. Is there anybody that can declare, I am releasing what's holding me back and I'm taking hold of faith in the master. If you're going to pack light and only take what is necessary to get to your destination to God, you must release what is unnecessary and pick up faith. But secondly, I believe that this text is instructing us that we must push. The text simply says, and run with endurance the race set out for us. I'd be lying to you all, I'd be lying to the graduates if I said that the race set before us would be easy. As a matter of fact, I have never seen anyone run a race and it looked as if it didn't take something out of them. Life is no different. The truth of the matter is that life can be cruel even when we walk in faith. But the encouragement here is that when we release the unnecessary weight of life, the sin that bears down so heavy and causes us to stumble and we hold on to our faith in God, that we will make it. Yes, life will have its moments of hardship and trouble. We will have to cross some tears, but with faith, we have what it takes to persevere, to keep going, to keep fighting, to keep pressing and to keep pushing. Being a Christian, a believer in God is not for the weak. It takes strong individuals to put their faith in God. They cannot physically see and form, but to believe that in God existence and the evidence of life. Many of us have come too far to turn back now. You've got to keep running this race in order to see what the end will be. One of the reasons I've learned not to give up is because I want to see what's on the other side. I believe in God's word where God promises weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The promise that trouble won't last always. We can't let life's obstacles cause us to throw in the towel in the middle of the race. We must push forward because there is another side. Obstacles are temporary. Struggles are only moments. Seasons come and seasons go. Our faith must be rooted in knowing that God will see us past our current situations and our current circumstances and take us to our greater future. Pack life, but because the terrain of life gets rugged and there will be, then there's no need to carry what may cause you to have some mishaps on yourself because life will already throw some curveballs at you. The text says to run. 
the magnificent thing about running is that in order to be considered a run and not a walk is that both of our feet are never on the ground at the same time. Catch this. If both of our feet are never on the ground at the same time, then something has to carry the foot is lifted while we bear down on the foot that is planted. Something has to continuously keep the feet in rotation as they balance and stride to their destination. Might I suggest that the thing allows, that allows us to constantly lift our feet is the strength of God on this morning? It's by the strength of God that we are able to run this race. It's by the strength of God that we are able to wake up every morning and place one foot in front of the other and stand firm as we rise to see the dawning of a brand new day. Race with endurance means to run no matter what comes your way, to continue keeping on running. If you fall, you better get up and keep on running. If you get off track, just keep on running until you reach back to the course. If you feel like giving up, just take a deep breath and keep on running. Your endurance to keep on running is what distinguishes you and sets you apart from others who may say that they believe in God, but lack the faith to trust in the strength of God that gives us new when we, when we are breathless, new strength when we feel weak, new energy when we feel depleted, new grace when we think that we can't. You've got to keep pushing and use your faith in God to believe that God will carry you through. This is not your end, but this is God's beginning. Oh, it's a new day. It's time to release what we have been, what has been holding us back. It's time for us to give, it's not time for us to give up but it's time for us to keep on going and push towards the mark of God. It's time for us to pack light. It's no need for us to continue to carry around this dead weight that continues to slow us down. We must release that weight and push on to see what God has in store for us. But lastly, I told you all I wouldn't be before you long. What I believe the text is instructing us to do is to focus. We must focus. We must release. We must push. And we must focus. Keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. You see, when I was in high school, I was the captain of my track team. I wasn't the fastest runner, but I showed up and I put in the work. When I first started out running track, my coach taught me a lesson that was useful on the track and in life. Whether you are young or you are old, I pray that this blesses you because I've been able to carry this in my daily living. My coach took the time to show me a major mistake that I was making, a mistake that we as runners oftentimes make. You see, when I was running, I would look to my left and I would look to my right and I would see where my opponents were instead of focusing on the direction and the goal in which I was trying to reach. It was when I was focused on my opponent's race that I had a tendency to sway from side to slide and slow down. My coach said to me one day, Samantha, you could be a lot faster if you would just focus on your race and stop paying attention to the race that your opponent is running. I've come by to tell somebody this morning, stop trying to mind everybody else's race and mind your own. Focus on what is set before you. There is no need or no purpose in comparing your journey to that of someone else's because what God has for you, oh, it is for you. When we focus on the prize that is set before us, it will make us want to throw away the weight of sin that slows us down. It will want us to limit our distractions that keep us away from Christ. It will cause us to want to focus on the Savior, to push forward and reach the goal to see what the end will be. Life may not have a ribbon at it that says finish. There may be no promise of a trophy, of a award, or a medal, but there is a Jesus who stands at the end of the race, stands with his arms stretched to welcome you to the other side. And this morning, don't get it twisted because I'm not just talking about the other side when we transition from life to death, but I'm talking about the other side of right now. I don't know what your situation or your circumstance may be, but I know that we serve a God that doesn't just wait for us to reach the other side 
of heaven to claim the victory, but we can have it right now. Whatever you've been carrying around, whatever's been weighing you down, you can get rid of that thing today. All you have to do is examine yourself and make a conscious decision that I'm no longer holding on to this hurt. I'm no longer holding on to this pain. I'm not only keeping on me what's unnecessary, but I'm trading it for faith in the master. You've got to keep your feet going, pick up the pace, and press towards the God of the most high calling. You don't have to wait to transition to labor to reward, but I believe that we serve a God that says that you can have it now. And we must remember that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses as we run this race. And as we keep our focus on Christ, we have more than enough because Christ perfectly exemplifies all that we need. Christ perfected faith as he trusted God and pushed forth on the road to Calvary. Christ had to endure this road that wasn't easy. He had men and women that were talking about him, that were whipping him and beating him, but he chose the joy of the cross. He chose to lay on Calvary to bleed and to die for us. He chose to perfect faith so that we too could endure. Christ now sits amongst that great cloud of ancestors and holds the ultimate testimony that we can stand and we will make it because he's all. On this journey of into our place, purpose, place of promise, we must remember the meaning of this word, Sankofa. Go back and get that which is useful and leave behind the rest. Leave behind the unnecessary because everything cannot go to your future. But when you get to the place and the purpose that God is carrying you to, you must know that God has everything that you need. We must pack light on this morning. We must hold on to faith. We must keep pushing and we must keep our eyes focused on our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this moment. God, we thank you that you have called your children, Lord. We thank you that you come and see about us in our mountaintop experiences, as well as our valleys. God, we thank you for the reminder this morning to pack light. God, that this journey that you have set before us doesn't need all of our distractions, doesn't need all of our weight, God, but God, we can just come freely to you in our faith. God, we're leaning and depending and trusting in you on this morning. God, I hope you continue to give us what we need. God, I pray that even as the college graduates transition from high school to college, God, I pray that as we make these God, you're having faith and trust in you. God, we love you and we adore you this morning. We thank you for all that you are and all that you continue to do. And together we say thank you and amen in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's give God amen. some praise amen. for the amen. word this morning. Amen. Back life. Back life. Thank you, Minister King. Your word is timely for us as individuals and the congregation as we seek to move forward. Thank you for reminding us that there's some things that we don't need to bring with us, right? Say it now. And we need to focus. There's some things we need to release. We need to have the energy to keep pushing forward. And we need to focus on the race that is ours. Thank you for that powerful word that is perfect for us at this moment in our lives as a congregation and as individuals. We are 
grateful for that word. If there are those among us who felt this word in a powerful way and need additional prayer about how to move forward by packing light, just type it into the chat and we will come to you. We will be back in touch with you. If there are those of us that have been trying to do this journey and pack for it by ourselves without being intentional about our relationship with the Lord and you want the Lord to be there with you to help you to know what to pack. In other words, if you want to give your life and this journey to the Lord, please, you can shout it out now. You can put it in the chat. You can call the church at 804-649-7225. We would love to help you as you listen for how God is leading you on your journey. Amen. We are grateful for this moment. We can't thank God enough for what God has shared with us in terms of this preach word, praying that it's going to take root. Look at here, Minister Kane. You ain't have to call the people out that are spiritual hoarders. Stop it. Stop it. So we are grateful that we have license to leave some stuff behind, some traditions that are no longer truthful for us. So thank you. And as we continue in this service, we are, many of us have already brought our tithes and offerings to the Lord. And so um, we just want to thank God for God's presence and God's generosity to us. And we want to continue to invest in that which God sees as good. And so let us pray now over our offering. Dear Lord, we just thank you and praise you for the gifts that the people that you've blessed have given. We are thankful for the people who have been offering time. We are thankful for those who want to give, Lord God, but do not have the spare resources to give. We are coming praying for a special, special opening of heaven for those people who are struggling from day to day, just trying to make it, Lord. We are asking that your generosity would just overwhelm them so that they might testify that you have come and interrupted what seemed like it might take them down, Lord God, and instead have provided everything that they've needed according to your riches and glory. So we offer this offering to you, Lord God. Some of us have given virtually, Lord God. Some of us have mailed our offering into the church. Some of us have just come to the church and handed it to somebody, Lord. So we just thank you for all the ways that people have given, Lord. Bless their hearts, bless their homes, bless their dreams, Lord God, and resource their purpose, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As we continue in service, it's time for us to spend just a little time on celebrating our graduates. Pastor James, hey, come on and lead hey, us into hey, the celebration. Man. Good morning. Good morning, faith community, Baptist church, family and friends, and to our guest preacher, Minister Samantha Kane, who brought that word this morning. I am proud to present our FCBC graduates the class of 2021. They have continued to achieve and grow in the midst of a pandemic as our nation and global community continues to recover. These future leaders, innovators, and world changers are about to soar in 2021. First, our elementary graduates, Mackenzie A. Bradley, Mackenzie is graduating from Sanson Elementary School and is planning to attend Fairfield Middle School International Baccalaureate Program in the fall. 
She has been an honor roll student throughout her elementary school years. Future plans include to complete the IB program from middle to high school and attend college. Terrence Dingle. Terrence is graduating from Henry L. Marsh III Elementary School. He will be attending Martin Luther King Junior Middle School in the fall. We are and we know that a great year is ahead for Terrence. And now our high school graduates. Zamira Michelle Brown. Zamira is graduating from Highland Springs High School. Honors include participation in the marching band, FCCLA, English Honor Society, and as a peer mentor. She is planning to attend Virginia State University and major in hospitality management. Larisha Hughes. Larisha is graduating from Thomas Jefferson High School. She is planning to work after graduation and prepare to enroll into the police academy. Jabari O. Parker. Jabari is graduating with honors 3.2 GPA from Highland Springs High School and has played on the football team for all four years. His activities include, but are not limited to volunteering as a junior coach with the East End Tigers, as well as volunteering as a reader during Read Across America Week. Jabari was also named second team all region at safety and named all academic. Future plans include to attend Virginia Tech, to be a veterinarian majoring in animal and poultry sciences, Future plans also include, watch out now, to be a player in the National Football League. Alexis Raglan. Alexis is graduating from John Randolph Tucker High School. Awards, honors, and activities include the Distinctive Education Clubs of America. Future plans include, but are not limited to, continuing to explore career opportunities and researching the requirements in becoming a caregiver. Alexis loves to assist the elderly and standing in the gap for those that need assistance with their daily lifestyle. And now we celebrate our college graduate, Taylor Martin. Taylor is a graduate a Virginia State University fall graduate of 2020 with a bachelor's degree in agriculture with a concentration of pre-veterinarian medicine with a minor in biology. Taylor is currently building her resume for her future goals, which include returning to school for two more years to get her vet technician license. Today, my people of God, we celebrate and congratulate our FCBC graduates. To God be the glory. Great things God has done. Amen. Amen. Unmute yourselves and give a whoop whoop and a praise Amen. God. Graduate. Before we ask, I didn't ask her before, hopefully she will, but before we ask Minister Kane to do the benediction, I just want to share a couple of announcements. Minister Kane, send me a thumbs up if you're still here. You may have run off to breakfast or something. Oh, hey. All right. Good. In terms of announcements, we got a lot of celebrations going on in the Smith Bond household. Amen. As was mentioned, baby Grayson came on Monday. I think he was 6 pounds and 13 ounces. Wow. 
And why Woo! not? Because the Friday before, Pastor Sierra and Brother Ronald celebrated their wedding anniversary. There's a lot of good stuff going on in that house. Um, and as, as, oh, there's the package. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, faith community. We sent a gift. That's what this picture is about. Man, uh, man. As opposed to uh, Deacon Armistead and Deacon Murphy hanging out together and having <laughs> flowers. Okay. Just want to clarify that picture. They're delivering the gift to Pastor Sierra and Brother Ronald. Um, if you haven't already, we really, really need you to fill out the survey that was sent via email so that we can plan with wisdom how to come back together into the sanctuary. We are excited about this possibility, but we wanna go beyond being excited. We also wanna be safe. Uh, additionally, we've got a great, great opportunity. Uh, Pastor and Deacon Carlett have been working with a group of people um, to expand, stay connected, stay on point, to serve our children during the summer, July 12th through August 20th, um, youth K through five, they have designed from scratch y'all, a powerful program for our children. If you have children, and it's free, if you have children K through five, who actually need extra support in reading or just love to read, or you know they need to get down with some reading, call the church office or email um, and give that child's information so that you can register that child for the summer gathering. Remember, we have uh, an opportunity to be part of this ministry serving as office manager. So if you got great skills or you know somebody that can help me and past the Sierra organize and help everything float around in the church that's supposed to be floating. Uh, we need an anointed office manager, you know, cause we got one now. But um, as we mentioned last week, uh, Deacon Davis is dreaming new dreams. And so we're not trying to hold her hostage. Um, and so we're in need of an anointed gifted office manager. Uh, don't forget, um, this week we have to uh, bring our donated items for the um, Richmond Public School teachers, you know, supporting them by June 18th. You can bring those things to the church. Um, and as always, let us keep our brothers and sisters, let us keep one another in prayer as church family. That concludes our announcements. We shall be released from this place by Minister Samantha Kane as she brings forth the benediction. Amen. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you, Pastor Allison, for your faithfulness. May God continue to reward you as well. Thank you, um, Faith Community, for allowing me to share in this sacred space with you all again. And glory to God for a beautiful moment of worship that we get to praise our Lord in spirit and in truth. If you all would close out with me. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May we go from this place and continue to be stewards and witnesses of the most high God. God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for allowing us to be in fellowship where we can praise and worship you. God, we give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise for all that has taken place. God, go before us and go with us until we shall meet again. We thank you. We love you. We adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey. Within your heart.